you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's great to have you here. Um, um, uh, Ms. LaFour, you mentioned uh, many uh, coal-fired power plants have been retrofitted. Can we retrofit a coal-fired power plant to uh, uh, an existing plant to address a uh, greenhouse gas rule or regulation? I'm not uh, an expert on that, but I think it's much harder than scrubbing things out of the stack. It's, it's impossible. There's no technology right now. The cost would triple the amount of infrastructure costs and the electricity required to run this is probably about 30 percent of the generation capacity of, of a, a power plant at this time. So um, that just goes into the emissions, kind of the whole debate, what is, what is toxic, what is not, this, the whole, um, that debate. And it does segue into both your, your this sphere on reliability, because as we have this debate and, and concern about environmental rules and regulations, the pulling off of generation it should be of major concern. Is that correct? Well, in the case of other EPA regulations, like when we worked on mercury and air toxics, as the rules became final, we had to work at FERC and with the EPA to make sure we had the coordination and flexibility that was needed to make sure we protected reliability. If there are other suites of regulations, that will be equally necessary. Well, let's talk, and, I, and I'll miss, uh, Commissioner Mueller, you're more than welcome to chime in, too. We know based upon MAC um, that anywhere from 50 to 70 gigawatts of coal-fired generation may be retired over the next decade. That's, that's a lot. Um, with 90 percent of coming within the next five years. So this next three to five window aligns with the compliance deadlines for EPA's utility MAC rule in places like the Midwest. Uh, some of this coal-fired generation will be replaced with natural gas-fired power plants, and that's part of the debate of having them and also getting the natural gas and the, and the pipeline siding. From your perspective, and this is for Commissioner Moeller, um, would you agree that the short compliance time frame for EPA's utility MAC rule is compounding reliability concerns for regions heavily relying on coal, such as the Midwest and the Mid-Atlantic? Yes, I, I do. I think that. It's, yeah, it's just a matter of numbers, isn't it? Well, I, the environmental benefits are, going, are coming. The question is, if you squeeze them on too tight a timeline, there can be reliability challenges that, that are probably going to land in our lap. So uh, that's why I've, I've urged the EPA to be flexible if certain areas need a little more time to give it to them. And not just reliability, because when, uh, when you, um, it is reliability, but it segues into cost, too. An unreliable grid is a costly grid, or, or wouldn't you argue? So from the individual consumer's point of view, um, that if the reliability of the grid it becomes um, uncertain and there's a risk premium then paying for reliability, that will get passed on to the individual consumer, would it not? It will, depending on the market structure, in different ways. G given your background as a state public utility commissioner and now your experience at FERC, do you believe having a diverse range of fuel resources available to generate electricity is important to provide affordability and reliable service to customers? Uh, yes, I've never been a state commissioner, but um, optionality is always good. And I understand that FERC does not have jurisdiction over generation, but would you agree that an over-reliance on any one particular fuel source could be problematic from a reliability perspective? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back my time.